Good morning, Wet Shavers, coffee lovers, and podcast listeners everywhere. It's Mark with GeorgeToon.com. It's time for another second cup. So grab a cup of coffee, kick back, relax, put in your earbuds, adjust your speaker volume, and let's talk some wet shaving and a few other things in podcast form. What is Second Cup? Second Cup is a podcast that will give you some additional information that didn't make the Monday morning mailbag deadline. This might be something that is time sensitive. For instance, a sale that could be ending before the next three MB airs, or a piece of late breaking information that viewers have passed along that is equally time sensitive, or something else regarding the wet shaving world that needs to be broadcast in a timely fashion. And we'll also have some time to chit chat and discuss some other things like coffee, movies, streaming shows, books, that sort of thing. So thanks for tuning in to Second Cup. And I hope you subscribe to the podcast where you can also find episodes of the Monday Morning Mailbag in podcast form. I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me. We'll get the show underway in just a moment. Thanks for joining me. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the November 20th, 2023 episode of Second Cup. Thanks so much for tuning in. I really, really do appreciate it. Big week this week because Thursday is Thanksgiving here in the United States. That is a really, really wonderful holiday where family and friends get together and sit down and enjoy a really, really wonderful meal and give thanks for all the blessing and bounty that God has bestowed on us and our country, our nation, our people. Uh, Really a wonderful, wonderful holiday. I look forward to it every single year. And of course, this holiday kind of kicks off the holiday shopping season. Uh, The next day is known as Black Friday, and that's a big, big shopping day. And uh, I was looking up the history and meaning of the term Black Friday, and it's come to mean a lot of different things, but it has evolved into meaning that this is a big shopping day here in the U.S. and that uh, retailers uh, go into the black. They go into profit. They go from red on their balance books to um, they go from red on their books, their financial books, to black on their financial books, meaning that they start making a profit because uh, a lot of people go out and start shopping for the holiday season. And I was curious about this because I, uh, I like to tune in uh, the BBC radio on the internet, and uh, I like to look at Sky News and the BBC on the internet, and uh, I see all kinds of of talk and uh, commercial advertising regarding Black Friday and Black Friday sales uh, over in the UK. And I'm wondering, how did that come about? Because, <laughs> because where, is that, where is that common holiday or that common day to kick things off? When does Black Friday happen in the UK? I was always curious about that. Is that just a, a term and a phenomenon that has translated across the pond from the U.S.? And they decided that, well, you know, when the U.S. has their Black Friday, we'll start our Black Friday over here. I, I'm, I'm just really, really curious about that. If anyone knows how that has developed and evolved uh, across the pond, I would really be interested. Email me at mondaymailbag at gmail.com and let me know. Because ever since I was a kid, Black Friday uh, has always been known as a big, big shopping day. The day after Thanksgiving that kicks off the the uh, holiday shopping season. And I know it's kind of evolved from um, different events and uh, different terms. And if you go up to uh, the internet and uh, look at uh, history.com and Wikipedia, they give you a whole breakdown on it. And it can be somewhat confusing. I know one meaning was um, in Philadelphia, uh, the police referred to Black Friday as the day before the Army-Navy game because everybody came to town to watch that uh watched that game uh, on Saturday, and Black Friday was was the day that everyone arrived, and there was a lot of shopping, uh, a lot of crowd control, and that sort of thing. So all the police had to be called uh, into the city of Philadelphia for for crowd control to um, make sure everything went smoothly. And that's why they called it Black Friday, because it was the day after Thanksgiving, and uh, many of them could not take the day off. Oh, I have to go in. It's Black Friday, meaning 
All these people are going to be coming into Philadelphia for the big game on Saturday. So it's kind of evolved from that point uh, as well. And it's just come to mean a, a big, big uh, shopping day after Thanksgiving here in the United States. And I've always known it to mean when retailers look at their books and they go from red, loss, to black, a profit. That's what I've always thought. But why does why is it why is that term being used uh, you know, overseas and in the United Kingdom. I thought it was something that was just uniquely American. And here I turn on <laughs> I turn on Sky News, I turn on the BBC, and the term is being used over there. So I'm just curious about how that has been adopted or maybe it was used there before it was used in the United States. I don't know. If you know, please, please let me know. Send me an email at mondaymailbag at gmail.com. Well, we have been contacted by all five winners in the 10,000 subscriber prize package giveaway. They have all contacted me. They have all sent in their addresses. So we are boxing things together, and we will be sending things this week and next week. Our number one prize winner, the gentleman who won first prize, Mr. Masher, lives in Malaysia. So we're sending first prize all the way over to Malaysia. So I have to make sure and take a little extra care in packing everything to make sure that nothing breaks in transit all the way over to Malaysia. Now, a little other development here. Chuck Price very, very kindly uh, donated that beautiful, beautiful vintage uh, straight razor uh, for the uh, fifteen thousand, for the ten thousand subscriber prize. I'm getting ahead of myself <laughs> for the ten thousand subscriber prize package giveaway, and uh, I'm holding it in my hand right here. It's absolutely beautiful, and uh, he contacted me uh, shortly before the uh, uh, the drawing and said, "Look, whoever wins the, uh, the 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 first prize because the straight razor was in the first prize package." Whoever wins first prize, let them know that if they if they do not want a straight razor, I will be more than happy to substitute a vintage safety razor in its place. And I said, that's absolutely wonderful. So I contacted Mr. Masher, our first prize winner, and I explained this to him. And he said, yes, that would be agreeable. I would really like to have a vintage safety razor. Uh, he would prefer that over the straight razor. So I let, uh, let Chuck know that that's, in fact, what is happening. And he is going to send me uh, a, a vintage Gillette Tech razor with both a short handle and a long handle, which is very, very generous of him. So thank you very, very much, Chuck. I really do appreciate it. Now, in talking to him about the straight razor, what we're going to do is we are, and I, I got it right here. You can, you can hear the bubble wrap. Let me take it out of the bubble wrap again. <laughs> so it doesn't make so much noise on the microphone, but here it is right here. Uh, I have it wrapped in bubble wrap, and I'm setting it aside. And the reason why I'm setting it aside is I'm going to set it aside for the 15,000 subscriber giveaway. So the straight razor is going to kick off the 15,000 subscriber giveaway. I think it's only right that uh, it still re- remain available as a prize to all the viewers and listeners out there. Uh, so uh, I believe Chuck is going to be agreeable to that. I haven't heard back from him, but that's what I recommended that we do. And I'm sure he'll be okay with that. So I'm uh, looking forward to hearing from him regarding that. Oh, yeah, here it is right here. He says, that's fine with me. (laughs) I just got his email here. Thank you very much, Chuck. I really do appreciate it. So Chuck is in agreement. So we are going to take this straight razor and we are going to put this into the prize package for the 15,000 subscriber giveaway. Uh, I mentioned that we were probably going to do another giveaway at 15,000. Uh, Some other viewers like Jimmy V said, hey, I'm looking forward to 15,000. That seems to be the agreed upon um, uh, mark for the next giveaway, 15,000 subscribers. So, pardon me. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to give this, we're going to have this razor in the price package giveaway uh, when we reach 15,000 subscribers. So I'm going to put it back in the bubble wrap here like this, (laughs) and I'll put it in a little pouch, and I'll, uh, I'll set it aside and I'll mark it. Uh, I'll keep it in a safe place and I'll mark it for the uh, 15,000 subscriber uh, giveaway whenever that whenever that happens. And we'll start talking about that on the next Monday morning mailbag. And we will also get these prizes shipped off to all of our winners. Uh, and uh, I'm making sure that everything gets packed up nicely and securely and 
you know, trying to prevent breakage and transit, that sort of thing. So really looking forward to uh, getting everything shipped to folks. And when I received that vintage tech razor with both short and long handle from uh, Chuck Price, I will include that in the, uh, in the shipment to uh, Mr. Masher in Malaysia. And, uh, and every, everyone will have their prizes on the way. And one more reminder to anyone out there who's listening to this, if you happen to be a winner in the 10,000 subscriber giveaway, please, when you receive your items, please take a picture of them or shoot some video, something like that, and email it back to me at mondaymailbag at gmail.com. And uh, I will show that on the Monday Morning Mailbag so all the viewers out there know that the prizes were received by the winners. So um, I'm looking forward to getting all of that correspondence as well. So, uh, hey, great to be with you this morning. Oh, wait a minute. Before I go any further, I got to tell you what I'm drinking this morning. I've got right here Bean to Bean Ground Franklin Reserve Coffee with tasting notes of black cherry honey and brown sugar. It's a medium dark roast. This very kindly came from viewer William Meredith. I still have a little bit left. It's a terrific coffee, and I am using the Bean to Bean Coffee Mug. Uh, that William sent along. Thank you again, William. Thank you very, very much. I love this coffee mug. And I know a, a couple of viewers have contacted me and said, we're, you know, we're, where's the website? I want to buy that coffee mug. And I pointed them in the right direction. So we'll have a link to uh, Bean to Bean, um, you know, in the, in, in the um, comment section below. So you can check that out. And hey, what a coincidence. Bean to Bean is out of Philadelphia. <laughs> The, uh, the home of uh, one of our Black Friday meetings. How about that? <laughs> and uh, we brewed the coffee this morning in our AeroPress. Uh, Roddy Ripplinger sent the channel an AeroPress. I love using this. This is absolutely a wonderful, wonderful coffee-making device. It is wonderful. All you have to do is put some ground coffee in there, put in a filter, a uh, little filter paper pad, uh, and then uh, add some hot water and just plunge that coffee, uh, that water right through the grounds into your coffee cup. Add a little more water uh, for taste, and my gosh, you've got a great cup of coffee. So if you're looking for, now that we're talking about uh, Black Friday and the ho holiday shopping season, if you're looking for a great gift, for the coffee lover in your life, check out the AeroPress. They have several models available now, and they also have one uh, for travel. It's called uh, Aero, what's it called again? I think I have the page right here. It is called, um, yeah, the AeroPress Go. It's a portable coffee press. Uh, so if you know someone who's traveling a lot, uh, that, uh, that they're in hotel rooms and uh, they really want, uh, you know, they they're traveling a lot, they're spending a lot of time in hotel rooms, or maybe they love camping, something like that, and they want a good cup of coffee. Boy, this AeroPress Go is a good way of going and uh, is a good gift. It, it, they'll, they'll absolutely love it is what I'm saying. And as they say, um, it's smooth, rich, grit-free coffee with a delicious full-bodied finish. That's absolutely true. Let me read that to you again. Smooth, rich, grit-free coffee with a delicious full-bodied finish. Yes, absolutely. And they have several models up there, and it makes a great, great gift. And I love mine. And I just absolutely loved brewing the coffee this morning with my AeroPress. My, my sincere thanks to Rodney Ripplinger again for sending it along to the channel. It is just a beautiful change of pace in making a cup of coffee in the morning. So that's what we got going on this morning. Thanks so much for tuning in. I really, really do appreciate it. Great to be with you. I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me. We'll get the show underway uh, in just a little bit. We'll pay a few bills, and then we'll get right to the show. Well, we've been talking about Black Friday and the shopping holiday season. We have something here to kick off your wet shaving shopping holiday season, and it comes from viewer Rodney Ripplinger. Thank you very much, Rodney, for forwarding this announcement to us from Wet the Face. They have a brand new shave soap and aftershave called Santa's Custom Blend Shaving Soap. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. And here's what they write. Introducing our latest holiday delight for the discerning individual. Santa's Custom Blend Shaving Soap and Aftershave. This unique offering takes a departure from the traditional and ushers in a more sophisticated and adult essence for your holiday grooming routine. 
Embrace the warmth and richness of Santa's Custom Blend, a carefully crafted shaving soap that combines distinct notes to create a luxurious and festive experience. Picture the crackling warmth of cherry wood mingling with the sweet allure of raspberry, all enveloped in the comforting embrace of vanilla and the subtle depth of tobacco. Wow, <laughs> wow, that sounds wonderful. Uh, it continues here. The fragrance profile of Santa's Custom Blend is a celebration of the holiday season with a twist. We've blended these notes to evoke a sense of coziness and refinement, providing a grooming experience that transcends the ordinary. This sounds absolutely fantastic. Uh, a wonderful, wonderful, gentlemanly, holiday, refined kind of offering. Uh, boy, the description appears to be spot on. My gosh, that, that makes you want to go right up to wet the face and order it right away. Absolutely beautiful. And the artwork on the label is terrific. It's $14 for, it looks like, um, what is it, 4.9 ounces, I think, or 4.0 ounces. Let me take a look here just so I can tell you. Um, it is four ounces. Yeah, boy, that is absolutely fantastic. And again, Beautiful, beautiful artwork. Santa with his pipe. <laughs> you know, in his full Santa outfit with a big white beard and a terrific looking mustache. And uh, really, a, it's a Norman Rockwell ish kind of uh, label art. Really, really terrific. So uh, check it out. It looks like, again, it looks to be, yeah, four ounces for $14. Uh, absolutely wonderful. So my thanks to Rodney Ripplinger for passing this along and helping us kick off the uh, wet shaving shopping holiday season with Santa's Custom Blend from Wet the Face. Thanks again, Rodney. Really, really do appreciate it. I received an interesting email from uh, viewer Ricardo Aguilar, and this kind of fits in with the holiday season because maybe someone will gift you a vintage razor. You never know. Uh, and he wrote, I bought a 1961 Gillette Ball Tech on eBay. Can you tell me how to disinfect? Congratulations on your 10,000 subscribers. Greetings from Houston, Texas. Well, thanks very much for the kind words, Ricardo. I really do appreciate it. Great to hear from you from uh, Houston, Texas. Here's what I do to disinfect a, a safety razor, whether it's one that I've purchased secondhand from a fellow wet shaver or uh, something off of eBay or Etsy, that sort of thing. Uh, I will uh, use Barbicide. Barbicide is what I use primarily to disinfect uh, my razors. Uh, I will dilute Barbicide according to the directions, and I will soak the razor parts. If it's a three-piece razor, I'll take it apart and put each piece in into the solution uh, or just submerge the entire twist open razor, whatever it is I have. I will submerge it for about 10 to 15 minutes, and then I will rinse it thoroughly, air dry, and then I'm good to go. That's, wh that's what I use. Now, some other wet shavers out there use 70% isopropyl alcohol. They claim that that's all that is needed. Uh, I have never really used that method, but I'm passing along just to give everybody a heads up on that, uh, that you can use that. You might want to do a little bit of uh, on uh, a little bit of online research to kind of further uh, get some more get some further information regarding that. One cautionary note, though, from what I've read is you do not want to use 70% isopropyl alcohol uh, on a gold plated razor. There's some kind of element in that gold plating, I think it's a lacquer of some some kind, that will um, react to the alcohol and possibly dissolve, I think is what I'm reading. So just be aware of that. Uh, but isopropyl alcohol, 70%, 70 uh, is one I've not really used, but I've, I've read that it's very, very good. The other uh, method that a lot of wet shavers use, and this is one that I have used as well, non-bleach scrubbing bubbles, non-bleach scrubbing bubbles. You can, uh, you can spray that onto your uh, razor and let that sit for a while and then rinse it off, and that seems to do a good job as well. Uh, at one point, I was doing a two-step method. I was using the non-bleach scrubbing bubbles, uh, soaking that for a few minutes, rinsing that off, and then doing my barbicide. I think that was probably a little bit overkill. I just do barbicide now. That's what I do. Again, I dilute the barbicide according to the directions, and then we'll soak the razor for 
10 minutes, 15 minutes, no more than that, and then I'm good to go. Uh, and lastly, a lot of wet shavers uh, state that all that is required is warm water and Dawn dish soap. And that's all you have to have. Just to take uh, your razor and uh, soak it in Dawn dish soap, get a nice soft uh, toothbrush, uh, a soft, soft toothbrush, super soft toothbrush, and scrub the parts a little bit, uh, rinse, and then you're fine. Uh, I have uh, used that as well, but I've always used that uh, along with my barbicide step. So those are a few methods that you can employ in uh, disinfecting a uh, uh, a used safety razor or a vintage safety razor that you've purchased off of eBay or Etsy, or perhaps you've purchased a razor secondhand from other wet shavers. I have done this. I have purchased other, uh, I've purchased second uh, secondhand safety razors from uh, fellow wet shavers, and that's usually my routine: barbicide and barbicide, and then uh, that seems to uh, that seems to do the trick for me. That seems to work, and a lot of wet shavers recommend that. So those are some of the recommended methods that I've come across, and I have used three of the four that I've discussed here. I've used the Dawn dish soap, I've used Barbicide, and I've used the non-bleach scrubbing bubbles. Again, non-bleach. Make sure if you're going to use the scrubbing bubbles, it's the non-bleach formula. So I've used those three, and of course, the fourth one we discussed was 70% isopropyl alcohol. I really don't use that one in my uh, razor disinfection routine. Uh, it's usually just barbicide, or if I want to do a little cleaning, it'll be Dawn dish, uh, Dawn dish soap detergent, clean up the razor a little bit, rinse it, and then follow with a little bit of a bath in barbicide for about 10 minutes or so. And uh, rinse it off, really, really rinse it off thoroughly. I mean, rinse it off thoroughly. A lot of rinsing to make sure that all that solution, barbicide solution is gone, and then air dry, and then uh, it... Uh, it's good to go. So that's kind of uh, that's kind of how I approach it, and I hope that information helps. I encourage you uh, to do your own research uh, on disinfecting a safety razor. Uh, there's a lot of great helpful information uh, out there online from fellow wet shavers, but uh, that's what works for me. And uh, Barbicide is definitely, definitely my go-to. And again, let me stress, I dilute it according to to the directions on the bottle. So that's that's kind of it in a nutshell, and I hope that information helps you, Ricardo, and I hope that helps other fellow wet shavers out there. Again, I encourage you, go online, uh, do your own research, and you know get some more information on this um, because uh, there are a lot of good methods out there on how to disinfect a, uh, a used secondhand vintage safety razor, and those are the ones that I have used that uh, work for me. And uh, happy to pass along the information. But again, I encourage you, uh, you know, uh, look into it a little bit more. But um, Barberside, non-bleach scrubbing bubbles, and Dawn dish soap have worked for me very, very well. Thanks again for the question, Ricardo. Really do appreciate it. Now, in last week's Monday morning mailbag, we talked about the Supply Limited Edition polished gold razor set that they were offering. And my understanding from one of the viewers was that uh, they only made a 1,000 of these, and it looks like they are selling fast. Of course, this is the Supply SE single-edge uh, injector razor with the uh, Nick Stop technology fin to guard that I love so much. It's my go-to razor for uh, head shaves. Uh, really, really like this injector razor a lot, and they are offering the SE razor in a whole kit uh, in polished gold. Uh, absolutely wonderful. And again, it looks like they're selling fast because I just got this email from them that uh, says, good news, if you're hoping to stock up on an excellent gift for the holidays or treat yourself to something nice, we just released 500 more units of our exclusive new polished gold razor set. Now, this is a limited edition. You get a polished gold razor. You get a polished gold razor stand. You get an eight-pack of their black label blades. You get their ultra lather shaving cream, their healing post-shave spray, and a silver tip synthetic shave brush. Really, really wonderful, wonderful item. Makes a great Christmas gift 
for the wet shaver in your life or something nice for you if you've always wanted to try a Supply SE razor. Again, a really terrific deal on a beautiful, beautiful Supply SE razor with all the fixings. <laughs> you know what, Thanksgiving coming up, we're going to have a Thanksgiving meal with all the fixings. Well, here's a Supply SE razor with all the fixings in a beautiful polished gold color. Absolutely outstanding. And if you've never tried an injector razor, this is definitely a wonderful, wonderful razor to introduce you to injector razor shaving. If you've tried a vintage Schick injector razor and didn't think much of it, you've got to give the Supply SE a try. It really will change your mind about how to use and how to get a great shave with an injector razor. It really does a superlative job at giving you a shave. Uh, the angle is a little different, 15 degrees, but uh, the, the Supply SE uh, really lets you go on uh, autopilot. It really does. As they say, uh, built like a tank, drives like a Tesla. Absolutely true. It really is a wonderful, beautiful, effortless shave from the Supply SE. So if, uh, if you want a really terrific razor uh, for, for yourself or for a wet shaver you know, this is a wonderful time to get the complete set in a beautiful, beautiful polished gold. 500 more sets have been released. Sounds like they're going fast. I hope by the time you hear this that these will still be available. From Supply, their beautiful polished gold razor set We'll have a link below. This comes from viewer Tyler Fike, and it's a wonderful stocking stuffer for the wet shaver in your life. This is the Laponics Shaving Kit. It consists of a pre-shave oil, shaving soap, and aftershave. Uh, I'll let Tyler describe his experience with it to you. He writes, Mark, this kit was my very first wet shaving product I bought along with my Vikings Blade Chieftain Odin when I first started wet shaving. I already had a cheap shaving brush from years before when I bought the Dr. Squatch shaving kit that they used to make. That was before I even knew how to use a brush and a soap, laugh out loud. Needless to say, everything went in the garage other than the brush. Maybe fate knew I needed that brush in the future, so that's why I saved it. Anyways, I had since given the Laponics kit to my dad whenever I started buying artisan soaps and aftershaves. Well, the other day I came upon it again on Amazon and decided to purchase it because from what I remembered, it was pretty good stuff. Sure enough, it came today and I had a shave with it. Wow, to be perfectly honest, it really surprised me. This is only $16 and the performance is fantastic. The scent of the oil, cream, and balm is very nice. The cream doesn't have as strong of a sandalwood scent like the oil and balm, but it still smells very good. It explodes in lather and has good slickness and cushion. I actually ordered another one to have some on reserve because this is going in my rotation. It would be perfect for a new wet shaver, someone who travels a lot, or an experienced wet shaver for that matter. It really is a good quality product, especially for the money. I highly recommend you give it a try sometime. There's no doubt in my mind that you'll be pleasantly surprised as well. Thought you may like to check it out and wanted to pass it along to you. As always, take care and God bless. Tyler. Well, Tyler, thanks very, very much for passing this along, and thank you for the ringing endorsement. We'll link it below. It looks like a great shaving kit for $16 and a wonderful stocking stuffer for yourself, for the wet shaver in your life. This really is terrific. Uh, it is sandalwood scented, uh, and it's the uh, Laponics shaving kit. Uh, that consists of uh, sandalwood shaving cream, aftershave lotion, and pre-shave oil. Uh, absolutely wonderful. Tyler, thanks very, very much for uh, passing this along. Again, folks, the Laponics Shaving Kit, a wonderful stocking stuffer for the wet shaver in your life, or a nice little gift for yourself. Thanks again, Tyler. Really do appreciate it. 
Now, at the beginning of the show, we told you about the situation with the vintage straight razor. Uh, this was a beautiful vintage straight razor that Chuck Price donated to the 10,000 subscriber prize package giveaway. And uh, he also gave the winner the option that if they didn't want the straight razor, they could have a vintage safety razor. And our winner of the first prize package, uh, Mr. Mash, decided that he wanted a safety razor instead of the straight razor. And uh, Chuck is going to accommodate him with that. Thank you very, very much, Chuck. Which means the straight razor is going into the 15,000 subscriber prize package giveaway. Chuck is kicking off the 15,000 subscriber prize package giveaway with this beautiful vintage straight razor. And this reminds me that if you yourself are looking for a vintage straight razor, maybe for yourself or maybe as a gift this holiday season, drop a line to Chuck Price and he'll be able to help you out. His email is breezyshaving at gmail.com, breezyshaving at gmail.com. Let me spell that out for you. B-R-E-E-Z-Y-S-H-A-V-I-N-G at gmail.com. Breezyshaving at gmail.com and Chuck will be able to help you with what you're looking for in a straight razor. My thanks again to Chuck Price for his very, very generous donation to the channel, the 10,000 subscriber prize package giveaway, and now to the 15,000 subscriber prize package giveaway. Uh, drop him a line, breezyshaving at gmail.com, and he'll be able to help you out with a straight razor. Now, before I get out of here, I want to recommend a book. Uh, that's right. This week, I want to recommend a book. This is a book I read every year around this time of year as the holiday season kicks off. And the book is A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. Now, the great thing is about this book is that you can get this book for free from a variety of sources. First of all, you can borrow it from your public library for free. Uh, and it's an easy read. It's not that long. It's not that involved. But it is a great story. And we're all familiar with the story. Uh, you can also go up to Project Gutenberg, where they have free ebooks that you can download for your Kindle or e reader, or even read in your browser online. Uh, it really is a terrific service. Any book that is in public domain, that is, I believe, 100 years or older, automatically goes into public domain. And they have thousands and thousands of these of, of wonderful, wonderful books by Dickens, by Twain, uh, etc. Uh, at Project Gutenberg, free to download and read on your uh, on your e-reader. Absolutely wonderful. I've taken advantage of it. And there are also free editions, or there used to be free editions, of some of these e-books on Amazon itself. Now, I have a very good uh, e-book edition for my Kindle that uh, I obtained from Amazon a number of years ago that was absolutely free. It was completely 100% free, and I downloaded it immediately, and I own it uh, for my uh, Kindle, and I fire that up uh, every year to read it. I also, I think I also have a, a, a hardbound edition someplace around here that I'll also read, uh, but it is a really, really terrific story. Now, uh, I first read it in junior high. My English teacher, Mrs. Cosmer, introduced the class to it and uh, explained that uh, technically A Christmas Carol is the first ghost story uh, because it involves uh, Christmas spirits. But uh, this was something that, uh, from what I recall hearing from my English teacher, something that was a new idea. So technically it is the first ghost story. But it is very, very well written, and I think you'll enjoy it. Um, we're all familiar with the story, and we've seen various adaptations uh, on television and in movies, uh, on film. Uh, go back to the source material and give this a read, and you'll really get uh, an understanding of uh, how they're trying to uh, move this story from book form to film form, because a lot of these uh, film adaptations do take a little bit of liberty with the story. There's a little bit of exposition in some of these films where they maybe try to just blend in a few other ingredients, either for um, either for the, the the dramatic purposes of of the film 
or they, they want the film to run a little bit longer, whatever the reason is. And uh, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Uh, but uh, go back and read the book. Give the book a read. I think you'll really, really enjoy it, especially for the holiday season. And it's something that I like to pick up, uh, try to pick up every year uh, to read about this time of year. And it really is um, it really is a really great, great read. And I'm looking at I'm looking at the opening lines right here uh, from a Christmas Carol, and it opens like this. Marley was dead to begin with. There is no doubt whatever about that. The register of his burial was signed by the clergyman, the clerk, the undertaker, and the chief mourner. Scrooge signed it, and Scrooge's name was good upon change for anything he chose to put his hand to. Old Marley was as dead as a doornail. <laughs> How about that? I mean, you, you know right away something's coming. <laughs> so give it a read. A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. A wonderful opportunities to obtain this story from your public library for free from Project Gutenberg. Also, I believe it could still be available for free from Amazon.com. Uh, Let me take a look. Let me just take a look and see if it's still available for free from Amazon. Hang on one minute. Let me take a look. Yes, it's absolutely free here on Amazon.com. I'm looking at two different ebook editions that are absolutely free to download to your Kindle. So there you go. You got a few options on how to read A Christmas Carol absolutely free. You can download it for free from Project Gutenberg to your Kindle or e-reader, or you could download it for free from Amazon.com directly to your Kindle. Really, really nice little bit of a Christmas gift for yourself if you want to read A Christmas Carol, a classic, classic holiday story. Or you could even buy a nice hardbound edition from Amazon.com or your favorite bookseller and uh, give it to uh, someone you know as a really nice Christmas gift or to yourself that you'll open up every holiday season. A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. Give it a read this Christmas season. And that wraps up another second cup. Thanks so much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. I sure hope you enjoyed today's show. If you did, please share, please subscribe, and pass it along to a fellow wet shaver or a friend. My thanks to everyone who commented and contributed to today's show, and I mean this sincerely. Without you, this microphone would be silent. If Second Cup or the Monday Morning Mailbag aren't showing up in your regular podcast feed, please drop me a line at mondaymailbag at gmail.com and we'll try to get it all sorted out. So again, thank you all very much. I look forward to getting together with you again on these podcast airwaves. Until then, enjoy the day, enjoy your shave, and enjoy that Second Cup. Second Cup.